the values that I learned growing up here in Nebraska. And I feel especially fortunate to have grown up here. And I share this great fortune with all Gates Foundation employees, every starting Gates class, uh, because I want them, I want every member of, uh, every new employee coming into the foundation to reflect on their values, who they are and want to be, and what work environment and culture they want to embody in our work at the Gates Foundation. So I'm going to share a little bit of what I share with those employees because I hope it does the same for all of you, to reflect upon how fortunate you are to be here in Nebraska, how fortunate you are to have the, the relationships that you have in, in, in Rotary. Uh, growing up on a Nebraska farm, having fabulous parents, great siblings like my brother Ron, being in the community of Ashland. I have uh, two of my, my great friends here today, Chuck Niemeyer and Dave Lutton. That I had the opportunity to look up to, to learn from, to to have mentor me, and across all of those those folks, and being here, I learned some important things about that set me on this this course in life. Important values. I start with work ethic. My dad taught me to drive a tractor when I was seven years old. He was smart enough not to put me out in the field then, but by age nine. I was uh, working in the fields uh, on the weekends, in the summers, sometimes in the evenings. And that really taught me the importance of a strong work ethic, something that's carried through with me uh, through all my life and something that I admire in others. I think there's special, something special about growing up on the farm. It teaches you a passion for what you do. You're caring for living things. Maybe it's the crop you're trying to keep alive in the midst of a drought, or maybe it's the hogs that you're trying to keep alive when the temperatures soar to 110 degrees. I learned internal competitiveness. My mother was a great influence in my life, just as my father was. And for Alice Rakes, it wasn't so much about whether I beat the other guy, but it was whether I lived up to who I could be. Was I the best that I could be? And she instilled in me that sense of internal competitiveness. Sometimes people make fun of growing up in a small community, you know, other people know your business. I thought it was terrific. A small community really underscores the values of honesty and integrity. There's not a lot of legal agreements between farmers. It's a handshake. Your neighbor expects you to live up to your word, and you expect them to live up to their word. It's that sort of honesty and integrity that you want to see in any work environment, that you want to see in your neighbors. My parents instilled in me a very strong sense of community, as did my brother Ron. I have a, a vivid memory of an anecdote when I was about 8 or 10 years old. There was a blizzard. Uh, some folks uh, were, for some reason, driving uh, out in the blizzard. didn't seem like a very smart thing to me. I think they were from Omaha. And, <laughs> They came to our door uh, and asked if we could help them get their car out of the snowdrift. My dad was quick to volunteer. It was about 10 below zero. He was quick to volunteer me. <laughs> and we got the tractor started up. We got the, um, the car pulled out of the snowdrift. They were about to be able to go on their way. And they wanted to give my dad some money. And I'll always remember this. I was standing there next to the car. And my dad said he didn't want their money. He just wanted to know that if his kids were ever in a similar situation where they had a challenge in life and they needed a neighbor to reach out to them, that he, he hoped that they would do that for his children. And I will carry that with me for the rest of my life. So it was that kind of sense of community that was embodied in my brother Ron. My brother Ron didn't want to be a politician. That was not anything that was on his radar screen. When Governor Ben Nelson asked him to serve uh, in the legislature to fill Jerry Warner's uh, position, um, he didn't really think that was probably what he should do. My sister-in-law, Helen, called me up, asked me to encourage my brother. Uh, it's a strange thing. He was the older brother. <laughs> And I didn't know that he would listen to me, and he basically said there was no way to help. He was going to do that. And the next day, he 
accepted the appointment, I called him up and I asked him, why did you do that? You said there, that that wasn't something that, that you thought you could do. And he said he felt a responsibility to give back to Nebraska, who was given so much to our family. So I grew up with that sense of community that I think is embodied in the spirit of Rotary International. I learned some other things on the farm. I don't know if you call this a value as much as you call it a perspective and leadership. And I share this with every Gates Foundation employee because you see they come in and they're very passionate about what they can do to help save the world. And I always remind them about work balance. Now I talk to them about work-life balance, but this is work balance. And I say to them as follows. Every farm kid wants to drive the tractor. <laughs> some days you drive the tractor, some days you scoop out manure. <laughs> That's a real job, and we all have real jobs here at the Gates Foundation. <laughs> Now, another thing that I learned from my father, it's probably not so much of uh, you think of it as value, but it was something that was extremely important in my life and my career. My father, you see, actually got his degree from the University of Nebraska in chemical engineering and was an engineer for Standard Oil of California as the Depression hit. Running our family farm was not his plan, but when my grandfather was going under during the Depression, it became his opportunity. And my father embodied in me that spirit that it's always good to have a plan, but be open to opportunity. He encouraged me to go to Stanford University because he thought it was more important for me to get a business education than an agricultural education. I went to Stanford, I found out they don't have an undergraduate business school. <laughs> so I said, okay, I should go into engineering. I did a degree in engineering economic systems. Uh, I prepared myself to go work for the USDA, and then I bought an Apple II computer to help my brother in running our farm, and the next thing you know, I go to work for Apple Computer. I loved high tech, and I thought software was really amazing. Steve Jobs wanted me to work on the Apple Macintosh. I would have been the seventh person on the Macintosh. But I remembered the notion of following your passion. And my passion was software. And so I joined this little software company in the Northwest, only 100 employees. Steve Jobs called me up November 1st, uh, 1981, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That was the day I resigned from Apple Computer, and he yelled at me about how Microsoft was going to go out of business. <laughs> I'll always remember that story. <laughs> See, Microsoft for me was a dream job. I loved what software could do. That was my passion. I loved the opportunity to create Microsoft Office. But what I really ultimately learned at Microsoft was that I loved working with high energy, passionate people, high horsepower, really smart, learn quickly, people who want to make things happen, people who want to be part of changing the world. That for me became a dream job. And that helps to explain my second dream job. I retired from Microsoft September 1st, 2008. I took a long vacation. I started the next day as CEO of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I followed my passion to that second dream job because it was an opportunity to use my skills to drive positive change and reduce the inequities in the world. 